Welcome to another Ag Legacy recording. Ag Legacy is a series of presentations and other online materials intended to assist rural families in creating their own legacy by beginning the thought process and opening the lines of communication. Today's recording will address the question, where are we with our management succession? I'm John Hewlett, a ranch and farm management specialist in the Department of Agricultural and Applied Economics at the University of Wyoming. I will be your speaker for today's Ag Legacy presentation. Most farm families feel like they've taken one or two steps toward planning the transfer of the farm or ranch to the next generation. The problem often is that only the founding generation has been involved in those steps. Successful transitions usually involve both generations in ongoing conversations over a period of time, often years. This is not so much because the individuals involved can't make decisions and stick to them, but rather that it takes time to explore the options, evaluate the possible impacts on everyone involved, as well as consider how best to structure the transition, particularly for the founders. The real challenge in this is that many of the parties involved, and this could be everyone, do not have a good idea of where they are in the process. Let's take a deeper look. Jason and his dad David are unclear how they should proceed. David and his father built the farm the families currently depend on to generate their livelihood. However, David struggles with communicating private information with others. He has never shared any financial information about the farm with anyone other than his wife of 56 years, and that's Martha. Further, he has not shared any of his ideas on how the farm might be passed on once he and Martha are ready to retire. Jason and his six siblings have been wondering how to approach the subject but are at a loss about how to begin. Every time someone tries to bring it up at a birthday party or over a holiday meal, David just leaves the room. Even Martha is unsure how to proceed, as David is reluctant to share his thoughts, even with her. What steps would you recommend that they take? A survey of baby boomers and their parents' views of inheritance and the issues of greatest importance to them was conducted by the Allianz Life Insurance Company in 2005. They found that fully 21% of boomers say they have not discussed any of the issues pertinent to a legacy plan with their parents. And although both boomers and elders think and say they are having an in-depth conversation about legacy planning, in reality, these conversations are not happening in a truly productive and meaningful way. In reality, most of us do not know how or are uncomfortable with discussing legacy issues. We know that the issues are important, but struggle to find the words to open the subject, no matter which side of the issue we might find ourselves. In fact, the Allianz survey found that among the baby boomers, whose parents had already passed, Fulfilling last wishes and distributing personal possessions were five times more likely to have been the greatest source of family conflict than splitting in an, any inherited money. Clearly, if that is true, discussing who will take over management responsibilities of the family business would seem to be an even tougher nut to crack. It seems logical to assume that where the manager and management in general of any family business is critical to its success, the success of that family business into the future depends almost entirely on the ability of the family to transfer management responsibilities to the next generation. However, it is said that only one-third of all family businesses successfully transition to the next generation. Most business owners recognize the importance of a succession plan in determining whether a business successfully transfers to the next generation. Doing no planning and or choosing to avoid the issue almost always leads to disastrous results. However, less than 40% of agricultural businesses have a succession plan. So what's the holdup? Complex forces are at work, and, despite recognizing the importance of a plan, most farm owners and managers decide to do nothing about succession. Several commonly cited reasons for not having a succession plan or not wanting to discuss one might include the following. Control. Few business owners find it easy to come to terms with the idea that the business could operate and survive without them. Thus, they are reluctant to give up control. 
Facing the reality that others may be able to run their business as well or better than they can is painful and threatening. The business defines them and surrendering power can be a huge sacrifice. Fear. Fear of retirement can also be a powerful force. The thought of leaving their day-to-day -day involvement in the business and adapting to a whole new lifestyle can be scary. Succession planning forces business owners to think about the end of their lives and come to terms with their own mortality. These thoughts can evoke feelings of fear or regret. Inability to choose. The inability to choose among children often discourages succession planning. The dilemma is between business values and family values. Should the selection be based on business competence versus the family values of loving and treating all family members equally. Emotional attachment to the land. Most farmers are emotionally attached to the land they own and manage. In many cases, these lands have been part of the family for more than one generation. Selling or dividing the land is often not considered due to these emotional attachments. No plans to retire. While many Full-time farmers have a very difficult time of hanging up their hats when the time comes to retire. They often never expect to fully retire from farming. The reasons are many, but often center around that 24-7 work ethic and personal drive that led them into farming in the first place. Most farmers have developed a lifelong attachment to farming, and many find it hard to accept the slowdown that generally comes with retirement. Farming lifestyle. Farming is a lifestyle, and most people in agriculture feel it offers something non-farm life can't match. The opportunity to live, work, and play together, live in the country, teach children responsibility, a strong work ethic, and healthy goals and values. And finally, no retirement income. No source of retirement income is another big issue that often prevents farmers from fully retiring. In many cases, farmers have invested in agricultural assets like land, machinery, livestock, and buildings throughout their entire careers and have few resources to invest in retirement plans. In order to perpetuate the business, it is inadvisable to sell or otherwise liquidate productive assets. So passing of business from one generation to the next involves transferring both ownership and management of the business from one individual to another. Transferring ownership of the family business assets can be fraught with emotional landmines and the possibility of damaged relationships. Just a few of the issues involved could include, for example, the desire of the founders to be fair, and while this may be a laudable goal, the objective rarely results in the intended outcome. Each member of the family may have a different idea of what is fair. Another one is ensuring the business has adequate capital in an attempt to make sure that the new owners have enough to provide for the needs of the business now and into the future. Covering the needs of other family members may also be important, but in fairness, family members who are not included in the future ownership of the business may need to have alternative plans for their future. And finally, selecting the mechanisms to ensure the desired outcomes are achieved may be difficult. However, family members and other individuals involved in family business ventures can make an orderly transfer of ownership more likely by following a systematic method of evaluating the alternatives. A big challenge in succession planning is knowing where to start. This seven-step process on the screen defines not only how to begin, but also important actions to take throughout the entire transition. The first step is to establish a timeline for succession. The key to this step is to start early. This is a process and not an event. None of us knows what the future might bring, so it makes sense to have your plan ready in case something unexpected happens, such as an injury or disability, death or possibly divorce. Rather than waiting until the issue is forced upon you, start the process in calm circumstances where there is time to discuss issues and come to an agreement. This can prevent serious damage to family relationships and the business. It will also allow potential successors to better prepare for the transition. Other steps in the process include establishing a planning team, selecting a successor, 
developing a written plan, communicating that plan, planning for retirement, and enjoying the future. Understanding where you are in the succession planning process can help to recognize what should come next, especially if one or more steps have already been taken. For this reason, completing an assessment to gauge where your business is in the succession planning process can help to evaluate key components of management succession. The Management Succession Assessment available from AgLegacy.org includes components addressing communication, formalized management, perspectives, business communication, managing conflict, and the succession planning process itself. The Management Succession Assessment is available in a written form in the Management Succession Workbook, and an electronic version of the assessment is also available for automatic scoring and stoplight analysis to aid understanding of the importance of various scoring levels and across assessment components. See the Management Succession Where Are We course at aglegacy.org and navigate to the Resources tab in the main menu to view the assessments in either written or electronic format. Note that the electronic version will download to your computer and will not be shared with anyone else online. The transition of management responsibilities in any business is challenging. It is even more challenging for family businesses where the individuals involved are family relations, business colleagues, and possibly rivals for the future business ownership. The complexity of the situation can be compounded when the underlying issues are not discussed or addressed. Following a formal succession planning process will increase the likelihood of a successful transfer of management responsibilities. And while it may be possible to transfer management responsibilities without following any steps, failing to complete one or more of the steps outlined here may put the future of the business and individual relationships at risk. Transitions in family businesses introduce many opportunities for interpersonal conflicts to emerge. It is important to practice good communication skills and sound conflict management approaches to keep these issues from becoming barriers to success. Ag Legacy can help, and materials are available. We recommend that you get started today. Use the Internet to locate resources, or many of which are free, or see the materials at aglegacy.org, including self-paced courses, workbooks, newsletters and bulletins, and recorded presentations, and a whole lot more. And when we started, we related that Jason and his dad David are unclear how they should proceed. In addition, they were not making much progress in handing over the reins to the next generation. Understanding where they are in the management succession process can help all the individuals involved, and furthermore, Following the steps of a process for exploring their options and including those involved can ease some of the tensions along the way. So keep in mind it is never too late to get started, especially where the individuals involved are interested. You have options, so plan to take a step or two in order to get things rolling soon. In addition, we would like to hear from you about topics or presentations you would like to see offered in the future. So please consider sending an email to information at aglegacy.org or possibly visiting aglegacy.org for more information. In closing, let me extend my thanks to our Ag Legacy team for making this series possible. We would also like to thank you, our viewers, for taking time to view this Ag Legacy recording. We sincerely hope that you find today's content of value in your work. We hope to see you again in one of our upcoming programs, and until then, we offer you our sincerest hope for success in creating an Ag Legacy for yourself and for your family. And for Ag Legacy, I'm John Hewlett.